Hello everyone, do you remember May of 2023? That was the month that the latest Legend of Zelda game had come out. It was Tears of the Kingdom. It was released. I enjoy Pokemon and other things, but Zelda's one of those other huge franchises that I had to try out, and I finally did, with Tears of the Kingdom. And I made some content out of that, it was a lot of fun, and people have asked before about, you know, returning to it, and I even have thought about returning to it, and I figured I would when DLC came out. But, no, as it turns out, no DLC or continuation of Tears of the Kingdom seems to be in the works at all. I think the only addition is what we have is the, uh, like, Zelda and Ganon amiibos. And when I say addition, you get them, I guess, and other things, and maybe, like, a paraglider fabric. So, other than that, no continuation. And so, I wanted to take this video as a chance to reflect on the game now that in may it's gonna be a year old and i really want to do that because a lot of people have also had a lot of time to reflect upload their own thoughts and their retrospectives as well and one thing i love is hearing what other people think of the same game and experience especially zelda fans who played breath of the wild previously and what they think about tears of the kingdom because as i mentioned i didn't have the previous experience of breath of the wild back when it came out i was kind of only watching other people having fun and i hadn't gotten into it now that i did tears of the kingdom and stuff it was fantastic and great but like i didn't have have that background knowledge of already playing Breath of the Wild, whereas a lot of people already had that map and experience going into Tears of the Kingdom. That's just one aspect to talk about. But listen, Breath of the Wild, back when it came out, it made waves and it was praised extremely highly as an incredible, beautiful open world experience. And it truly is. I imagine that when Breath of the Wild came out and then, you know, they were like, the, the Zelda team was like, we need to make a sequel or something, or maybe not even sequel, but we have to make our next game. Uh, that must have been a difficult thing to follow up on or something because, you know, Breath of the Wild is such fanfare and people love it and it's incredible i kind of see where they came from when they decided to reuse the map from breath of the wild reuse a, a lot of the everything to make this sequel game tis the kingdom and so i think you know that is really cool but yeah they kept a lot of the breath of the wild based stuff including map enemies and other things but then they also decide to you know change it up a bit in certain areas you know the rito village gets snow everywhere all chaos on the surface and then they also expanded to the skies and the depths and it's unfortunate but if i were to like return to the game i don't know what i would do for sure because i have completed a good amount of stuff. The only things I haven't done would be the booble frog stuff. Getting, you know, the paraglider fabric for that. Kind of want to do that, but that involves, you know, going to every cave. Uh, there's also, like, the other 100% completionist tasks I could do, but I don't quite like doing that. So, probably not gonna do that. This is, again, from a Pokemon fan who's never really of officially completed the decks. <laughs> it's, it's tough. One other thing I wish they expanded on that some people have also uh, talked about would be the story and the Zonai and stuff. And I'm kind of drawing here the Zonai aspects, and I think that was one of the coolest aspects. Because that we had this, like, ancient kind of civilization and stuff, and new characters and whatnot. So, yeah, we have these uh, two Zonai characters, and I was bummed to only have King Raru and Minoru as, like, the only ones that we saw. I remember playing through the game and when we saw the, you know, original ancestors that our companions would ultimately fulfill the roles of, uh, I was excited to see more of them and to see them without their masks. I really hoped we would be able to, but we never did. I also would see during that, like, Demon King flashback, the one that we got for times flashed in front of the screen there's a scene that shows all of the individuals fighting the demon king ganon and i remember when i was first playing the game i was super curious about the other zonai thing because i was like is this like a zonai link i for real thought it was like link and stuff or something or i don't know <laughs> 
I still need to draw what was like in my head. It was just, you know, a shadow, like somewhat shadowy figure that like I couldn't make out everything. And it was just kind of a quick glance and all that. But it turned out to be Minoru and that whole story and everything with it. Um, so the sister. But I would have loved to see more Zonai stuff. We also have Link and his Zonai armor and whatnot. But we never really again got to see much of it. We saw, like, the, the outfit and, you know, these little details, but not quite scratching my itch for it that I had and still kind of do have. I would love to see it. I'd love to see more. Why? Why are there only two? Like, hello? Also, you get to see in the game the dragons and you get to see the whole plot line with the dragons and how um, Zelda eventually comes into one. We also got to see that Ganon goes into one for the major boss fight. We also saw the three roaming ones throughout the game. Ones that you can ride, ones that you can have fun with. But it would have been really cool with that lore established about the secret stone and the dragons and stuff. It would have been amazing to follow that through and to see exactly what the dragons are. Because that, that le leaves a lot of fans with questions and stuff and curiosities and even the fact that Minoru um and the game made such a fuss about the secret stones becoming dragon dragonified whatever that like it's forbidden like there's so much background knowledge that was kind of left untapped that would have been really cool to expand on and I for one would have loved to see that expanded on for example it would have been awesome to play in the past or play like you know Zelda gets sent to the past and we have flashbacks, but the flashback mechanic was, it's not as fun as actually playing it during that time, you know what I mean? And it was doing something that Breath of the Wild had done. Breath of the Wild, it looks like, had also done these flashbacks of getting memories back, and that made sense. Link lost his memories and whatnot and was trying to get things back. But in Tears of the Kingdom, we kind of had these teardrops that were sent to the earth, and that was, you know, Zelda's kind of tears and memories and stuff. And then you are kind of supposed to stumble upon them through the game and learn more. Um, well, I hadn't stumbled upon them for the longest time because, I don't know, I, I didn't mess with the little geoglyphs or whatever they're called. I never really, I just kind of, I think I showed up to one and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. But I didn't stay long enough to find the teardrop. <laughs> and so the first one I saw was actually Lanayru with the pirates. The pirates are another little thing where it would have been cool to see actual pirates. I was hyped up to see actual pirates. I was kind of disappointed they were not actual pirates. They're just monsters, but anyway. So I was down there, saved the town from pirates, and then eventually ran into the teardrop one. And that's the betrayal one. <laughs> so the first one I saw was this. All right, Zelda. We are alone as you requested. What was it you wanted to discuss with me in private? You are far too trusting. Oh my. I'm surprised to hear you say such a thing. That is quite out of character for the Zelda I know. But then you are a puppet of Ganondorf. Did you really think we hadn't realized your deceit?
<laughs> Pretty funny. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's an interesting mechanic, don't you think? If you can't watch it in order, I was kind of confused. Oh boy. Fitting the pieces back together, all that stuff. It's crazy. That one was a wild ride. I got to see the meme face. I got to see evil Zelda for a sec. I, I, there was a lot. Is Sonya's dead? <laughs> First appearance, last appearance, it feels like. <laughs> I wish there was more to do to return to the game to do, let's say. So I wish there was more to return to because even now it's a super fun game and as i booted up to get some footage and work on this video i kind of had that twinge of you know wanting to play again but at the same time kind of having done everything except the super grindy korok and bubble frog adventure quest line other than that um there isn't much i mean i can run around and look for horses having done all the shrines is one thing i am curious about people's thoughts on shrine stuff one of the things that you could maybe return to if you haven't done this would be getting all the shrines complete of course and you could even do that as the goal in order to get the weird armor like link that transforms link into the the guy this little guy weird guy I had wanted to do that, uh, so I had to do all the shrines, complete them. And the shrines here, I was very curious about how the shrines were gonna be, because in Breath of the Wild, like I said, there was, it, you know, I'd seen the shrines and whatnot, and the dungeons, let's say, and then I've also seen people's criticism of them and stuff, and so... It was interesting to see Tears of the Kingdom and then people's reactions to those puzzles and things and how they like those. Let me know how you enjoyed them. But for me, you know, it was very fun at first, but then the shrines just became like a checkpoint, like a, a spawn place. I stopped doing them at some point. Like, uh, I think... And I didn't love the puzzling. Like, there was a time, at least personally, where, you know, I would just go to the shrine in order to, like, unlock it. Like, go in, go out, just to unlock it or something for, like, the travel spot. I had a bunch of the shrines that were, like, uncomplete. They were kind of, like, a unlocked and uncomplete. Thank God there's, like, the notifications of showing... You can look on the map whether or not you've completed it or not. Um, <laughs> because having to, like, re-trek my way, trying to get through these different shrines that I had passed, or, you know, all that, I had to actually plow through if I wanted to get that one armor and stuff. And it was fun. And when I was plowing through these, one of the shrines I liked a little bit more were, like, the journey ones. I don't know how to explain it, but you know the ones where it's take the crystal somewhere or like do a task like i really like that stuff like the one with there's a big he within a cave area and it has the glowing green crystal around its neck i thought that was really awesome i loved going in there and just being sneaky like i didn't have to as you know you can go in there guns blazing but there was something about just clinging onto the wall, listening to the footsteps this monster, this beast is doing because he's walking around in like a circle. Just hearing this monster pounding away through this area and then noticing the crystal there, it was fantastic. I really liked it. I also really enjoyed sometimes the ones where you would, you know, like I said, fuse it to something and have to fetch it somewhere or bring it somewhere. I liked the water ones, let's say, like, you know, the one where in Zora's domain stuff, um, you had to, like, connect and take that down. The ones I didn't love as much were the sky ones, because, oh my gosh, uh, I could not keep these things in the sky. Like, these things would just roll off, they would, I'd had to go back to the bottom, and, oh man, once it rolled off onto the bottom on the surface area... It's over. Like, I... Transporting that thing back up there was crazy. If you needed to. There's also the flux construct ones where they were, like, attached to the construct. And that was kind of cool to see. But then it was, you know, kind of oldish. But, yeah. 
Ah, but then also the Ravu's Blessing Shrines were fantastic for me personally. <laughs> because, yeah, I, I enjoyed doing your task and then just entering the shrine and it's the freebie kind of thing. Even though it's not a freebie because you did the task already. I think some were freebies though just for finding the shrine and caves in different areas. I appreciated that. But once again, I'm coming from knocking all the shrines out at once. Not really, I think, the intended gameplay of it. And so, I like that stuff. I did like the mystery shrines in some areas. I think some people would have liked to see more puzzles everywhere for each shrine or something. Or like, more or less of one. I don't know. But that was my experience. And I, I liked it. But yeah, the shrines are interesting. And so... It was really fun to do. The ones I hated were the combat ones. Um, I don't know. Probably because, like, I... Like, you encounter them throughout the game, and they feel like tutorials. They are tutorials, but it's like, you know... Usually, by the time you've encountered it, it feels like, you, you know this. You, you're good. Other than, like, the first, maybe, ones nearby. But, <laughs> yeah, that's something is that the combat training stuff I did not love. Take me out of there. Take me out. Now, Fuse and stuff. How How is that? How did we like that? I still love it. I mean, it's so cool. I still think back to that trailer where they were showing off the new Fuse mechanic, um, where, you know, our guy is playing the game and he's fusing a rock to a stick and then beating up some constructs with that. Yeah, that was awesome, and I think the fuse mechanic is still so fun. I adore it, but I know for some fans, they don't love it, or they don't love Ultra Hand, I should say. Um, the fuse one, I guess that's part of it, is I even got confused for a sec there. Fuse being, you know, fusing things to items, but the Ultra Hand being like constructing them together. I like it. Um, there are quality of life changes that could be made with the fuse option. I think everybody agrees that the arrow... You know, if you're fusing something to an arrow, having to, like, go through the menuing can be tedious sometimes. It's kind of clunk, but it's okay. It's okay. My favorite things to fuse were just, like, the cute things, like the seal plush that, you know, at first kind of felt useless a little bit, but in reality had its own little bounce to it. Um, you could clearly see, yeah. It's very good. As for, like, characters and stuff... You know, a lot of the characters, and I think a lot of charm comes from revisiting this map and area and characters that you encountered from Breath of the Wild, the first game, and then you get to see them again in Tears of the Kingdom, and I think that was very special for a lot of people. Um, of course, I knew of the characters, but as I said, didn't really have that first-hand experience interacting with them, but... Even in Tears of the Kingdom, interacting with them has been so fun, and I love the different characters. I, I thought this stuff was really cool. Do when I came into Zora Domain, and this girl is like, yo, I'm his fiancé? Sidon's fiancé? I was like, dang, what? That's interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> but it was cool to see. Um, the one character, though, I'm surprised did not make a return is Cass? So... I know this bird is a lovable accordion playing guy. I think there's much more to him, but I wish I could have experienced him. I don't know where he is. Um, I guess he'd succumbed to the blizzard, like he's dead. I really also enjoy the other abilities, like Ascend and stuff. Man, Ascend is so good. I would have never come up with that idea. Um, and it worked so perfectly being like a wasn't it like a debugging thing or like you know the they were creating it to like work on the game but then it was just so good they kind of kept it ascend is great and when that was introduced i think me and others were also like well how is this gonna work but it works so well it works great i love also choosing shrines with it but <laughs> yeah it's it's wonderful i do like that also about the shrines is that you can kind of bypass some of them um like brute force it and that's magical <laughs> i would say so okay and then returning content man what is also the depths the depths i never completed like that is one thing where I think people have also had their thoughts on this. So the depths, like I said, amazing when you first go down there. Amazing for a while. It still kind of is, you know, you visit. But 
it is a grand area the size of the map but it's the same it's like it's just the same stuff it's you know you have the shrines are the light routes down below and you can activate those to light up the depths of course find your way around but you know there's there's mines there's stuff like that but it's totally like the same and so i never really did that much exploration in the depths and even now don't really have the urge to go do all the light routes because uh, i'm not going to be spending too much time in there it's it's beans i mean the main areas i remember of course is like the one with the great deku tree when that like that quest line and stuff thought that's really cool i still need to challenge the coliseum <laughs> but yeah uh the devs are something and then yeah i think there's been a lot of thoughts on the depths being included that you know maybe it shouldn't have been that vast if it's gonna be just kind of the same thing all across the map um i do really like that you can find the bosses down below and rematch those that's really great um but on the flip side of the depths we have the sky islands which are a little empty and uh there's not much there we have the opposite problem um and it's a shame because, you know, in Tears of the Kingdom, the sky was hyped up. It had to be. I mean, we have the same surface, but what are we going to do? Hype up the sky? Yeah, we hype up the sky. Um, but they forgot to add stuff to the sky. Like <laughs> The Great Sky Island is, you know, wonderful. I think everybody praises it as they should. It's a great tutorial island. It's so fun to open with that and to experience that. But then the rest of the Sky Islands are not like that at all. The Great Sky Island is, like, unique. I mean, even the story-relevant Sky Island area is, like, not even comparing to the Great Sky Island. I don't know. Maybe because, like, they don't have the big birds that I like. There's giant birds there. It was magical running around in that for the first time and getting the hang of everything. That's a great way to start the game. Um, but... Unfortunately, the rest of the Sky Islands are just kind of things that, you know, there's a thing that shoots you everywhere, you can find some constructs, you can do whatever, like, there's not much, and so that, that part is kind of, was kind of a shame, and it still kind of is, I would say, but that's one thing that they could maybe take into consideration is that i think a lot of people have like the sky islands are great but like uh, there's not much and they're kind of the same too but yeah it's interesting so there is some controversy with the depths in the sky island <laughs> and the map of it but no it's it's interesting and so like i said i have to i would love to hear your thoughts as well as someone who maybe played it or wants to play it or sees it or i don't know i would love to hear it thank you so much for watching though this sh little rant thing not rant thank you so much for watching though this video going over a little bit of tears of the kingdom like i said it'd be fun to revisit this sometime but i'm not sure what to do so if you have ideas let me know if you want to see something like it let me know um or we can discuss but Either way, thanks so much again for watching, liking, subscribing. Helps make the content possible and fun. And uh, yeah, I enjoy it. I appreciate you so much. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye.